Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TMG and finally I'm back with a brand new video. This is the first video I've done in 2021 and it's going to be a setup video on how to set your car up for a race, but it's going to be a little bit different. How to actually set your car up without using any telemetry apps whatsoever and again it can be pretty difficult, especially for the guys on the console who don't have the um, sort of capabilities of setting up their car with telemetry apps so you can see what the dampers are doing and the tyres and the brakes and all sorts of things. but. You can actually make a pretty good setup just by setting up your car by feel. I'm going to show you my method to how I do it. Um, so yeah, um, I want you guys to sort of concentrate on the, the little things. It, there is certain things you might think are a little bit long, uh, a little bit long winded, but to get the best out of a, a setup done by feel, you might want to try these steps that I'm going to show you guys. So anyway, script to TMG, let's get stuck into this video and yeah, let's go. So the first thing we're going to go through and review is going to be obviously pull it on default setup. So there we go. Chuck that on aggressive default, which should be your base for most cars. If you're making a setup, you definitely want to be setting a car up on default aggressive. Um, and what I'm going to get you to do next might be a little bit long winded, but it is something that you can do on both the console and PC is I want you to sort of record your laps. So basically run around. I don't know, maybe around three or four laps. So I'm going to leave the pit lane. I'm going to start running laps now. And this this is just pretty much, you want to get the, the tire pressures, but what are, the mistake a lot of people do is they get the tire pressures once they cross the line. But once you cross the line, driving down the straight, that's when your tires are working the least amount. So you're not getting the tire pressure correct for when your tires are working at their hardest which is where you sort of want to set your your psi's from you want to make sure when you're setting your psi's it's from when the tire is actually working at their hardest which will probably be through this section on the left hand side of the car so th this is the corner pretty much where i want to set my um psi's up from jesus back end all over because of course that is the part of the track where you really are you know depending on the left hand side tires to stay within the correct psi if they get too hot you're going to start sliding which of course around here on a corner like that is going to be a nightmare after a few laps your tires are going to be done deep into that so i haven't driven the lambo around here in quite some time actually Again, this is another corner that is pretty hard on the left-hand side tires. Because as you're driving across the line, the tires probably are not going to be working as hard as when you're going through some of these corners. I was actually very twitchy for me at the minute. Anyway, once you've once you've you know done a few laps in the car, I've got the general feel of how the car reacts. It does feel a little bit light through this section. You already see Christ. Wow. Back end is really going. I think we can fix this pretty quickly. Once we get the car back into the garage. Again, back in, stepping out quite a lot. And definitely since the last patch we had, um, I feel like a lot of the, you know, the, a lot of the cars that are non front engine seem to suffer a lot more with a bigger disparity in the rake. So whereas you could get away with, with running a little bit more rake before, now I feel like it's definitely more punishing to have your rate too high. Uh, 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 no, the front end doesn't feel too bad. Well done, mate. The fastest step so far. The reason why I want you to record your lap is so you can watch the recording back 
and then you can be able to see your tyre PSI as you're going through the corners. So when I say record, I mean like a, a proper recording, not like a watching the replay. You need a proper recording. This is if you want to go into detail with your setup. That can definitely lose through there. And because, because obviously when, when you're concentrating on driving, you can't sort of get the perfect PSI. You can't look at your PSI's perfectly and gauge the right PSI while driving at the same time. Hence the reason I say, make sure you um, record your, your a few laps and then you should be able to work out the perfect PSI's. Going by the, the, the corner where your tires are doing the most work. And that's for each tire. So, okay. So we'll stop that there. Now, obviously, as I'm actually recording while I'm doing this for you guys, so it's hard for me to actually, you know, get the right PSI myself. So now we're going to actually go over some of the footage that we had just done. So we've gone a few laps in so we can get the right temperature. Um, and now you're going to see me go through this corner. You see the... Rear left is about 27.3, the front front left 27.1. As we go through the section where the tires for me definitely work as hard as possible. So the, the rear actually is not too bad. Goes up to 27.5 and the front goes up to 27.3. Um, now the right hand tires definitely need to go up almost one whole PSI on both the right hand side tires. So we can use that to base our our tire PSI off for now and if we need to make any small adjustments we can do so so let's get back onto the game so back in the setup page now we know we just needed to go up two PSI on the front left and one whole PSI um, on the front right and the, the, the rear right so we're going to go put this up to 26.8 now we're going to put this up to 26.5 and hopefully now that should keep the disparity between the left and right tires at a decent amount when we're going around the track especially in them corners where the car's working extremely hard um again here with the tc and abs this is something that we should all be changing you want to try to get away with running it as low as you can especially the tc the abs i guess it is down i think it is quite you know quite important depending on what pedals you actually have what you can get away with on the braking zone. My pedal at the moment is actually clipping. So I've had to put a small delay on my actual brake pedal itself, which is not ideal. Um, but for me, I've, I reckon around three ABS is what you should be running. Um, traction control, as I said, one or two, you should be able to get away with it. In the, in the, in the Lamborghini, as it doesn't have a huge oversteery sort of nature when getting on a power, unless the setup's just that bad, okay? But... um. We're going to leave the rest of it. Um, we'll give ourselves some fresh tires for now. Um, what you also saw as well is that, you know, there was so much oversteer, so much oversteer going into the, the fast right hander. Um, and this is because in the last update, it seems to have changed the aero balance quite a lot. And you just cannot get away with running crazy, crazy amounts of rake anymore. So what I'm actually going to do. Um, just to start it from base is pretty much going to take away all the rake. And we're going to go up on the rear ride height slowly until we get to a place where the car is able to, you know, still have a front end. But, you know, you, you're, you're a lot more stable. You're not sort of having to catch the car. The other thing I did notice is for me, the steering was a little bit tight. So I'm actually going to go up on the steering ratio by one. Um, again, this is personal preference depending on what sort of steering angle you use. Um, I'm actually going to go down on the brake bias because obviously the car's going to have a ton more of understeer now because I've completely flattened the car out. So we're going to go down to around 
59.4 for now we may go up or down um and let's see now let's try and see how much more stable the car is our fastest lap so far one minute 37 7 but let's see what we can do now the car should have a lot more understeer but it should be a lot more stable also Already feels more stable. There you have it, no more oversteering moments. Totally prime going for that section now, but you still want to retain, you know, some of the nimbleness. You don't want the car to be over safe. You can still see a lot of understeer there. We uh, broke ourselves. Now, this is going to be the corner where we suffer, these two corners here. And we do a couple of laps with the car like this. Oh, too deep. That's what she said. Already we've managed to gain a lot of time. Most of that will be probably because of the traction control. It's probably a bit too high before. Front end definitely needs a little bit of help getting the, the nose in. But the Lambo seems to be um, responding quite well to not having so much rake. So you're going to want to go up pretty slowly with the rake just to make sure you don't overdo it. Oh, lacking a little bit of rotation as well in the slow corners. Not the best exit. Mm -hmm. 
keep it in third this time. Still can't do the last corner flat out. Again, we've made a substantial gain um, around the lap. So we gained about 1.2 seconds in total just by making a, just a couple of clicks here and there. And as, as I said, it, you know, it's not rocket science. You just have to make sure your car is, that you're comfortable driving the car the way it is. And you don't want to be over comfortable. As I said, you still want to have to, you want to have to do a little bit of work to control the car. But the main thing is, is to be able to drive the car confidently and comfortably because at the end of the day, that's where you get your speed from. So, um, now for me, it felt pretty nice, but it just lacked a little bit of, of rotation, a lot of rotation in the slow corners. Now for me, I'm actually going to put the anti-roll bar up on the front and the rear. Um, I'm going to go up two clicks on the rear ride height and I'm going to use a little bit of preload just in case the car is really unsettled um, off throttle because I actually am going to go down on the brake bias because I felt like the car was just every time I touched the brakes it just didn't really want to turn so we're going to go down a few clicks and we're going to see how the car reacts to that hopefully we have made the car more responsive more reactive and not overdone it so let's go back out there again let's see what we can do this time feels a lot better for the last corner i see what we can do in terms of lap time Little bit of sliding. Still have to wait for the tires to get up to temp. Still lacks a little bit in the high speed stuff. Able to get the nose in a little more there. Whoops, too deep. some extra time straight away though a lot better now the tires are marked to temperature car feels a lot easier to drive
Oh Christ. Bloody hell. I would have taken another half a second out there. We'll do one more lap, I guess. up as far as we were before. we don't go quite as wide and we still managed to make almost the same same improvement but um again we're going quicker and quicker let's have a look at the timetable just to see where we're gaining the time um we actually matched the exact same time we got before on our first lap so that's pretty good um Gaining quite a lot out of the last corner. And that That's pretty much, you know, the last sector is pretty much the two right-handers towards the end of the lap. Where, of course, with the, the rear race slightly, we're getting a little bit more rotation for the fast corner. So we're actually just, just gaining time hand over fist. Even on our the lap that we invalidated right at the end, you can see our first sector was pretty damn good as well. Um, but yeah, it's not going too bad at the moment. The car still needs um, a little bit of something, I would say. Um, definitely, I, I would actually think about going down on the rear toe just a little bit. Um, and perhaps maybe even go another click up on the, the ride height on the rear. Again, comparing to where it was before, the, the rear ride height was on 68. So we're talking about 11 millimeters higher than what we are now. So that is why the car is... The behavior of the car is so different um, compared to how it was before. Now, one thing to mention about Zanvor in the middle sector where the um, the fast right-handers come along, there is actually a curb there that can really destabilize your race. Let's try and find it quickly here. Um, so I'll point the curb out for you guys to actually see. Now, this curb coming up here, this curb on the inside now if you continually hit this curb during a race you actually do suffer quite a big pressure loss in your in your right hand tires so that is something you have to consider especially when racing around here and you know you may need or may not need to over inflate your tires to make sure when you get the pressure loss that it's not you know you know completely affect the way your car is handling because I've noticed again since the patch, um, one of the biggest things that I have noticed is is that getting away with running your PSI is lower than the 27.5 recommended, you can actually notice quite a big difference, man. So um bear that in mind when you when you are running your PSI is too low, your car is gonna feel like crap. Now, for me, it, it's easier to drive with the PSI is over the limit than it is with the PSI is under the limit, which is why I'm telling you to always make sure to at least, if you're going to have your PSI is wrong, if you do get it wrong, you want them to be on the higher side rather than the lower side because the lower side is just, it's a nightmare. But anyway, back into the setup. As I said, um, I've gone up one on the, on the ride height. 
Let's go for the rest of the setup. The, the dampers actually don't feel too bad. And obviously the dampers is gonna is gonna be something where you're gonna really have to pay attention to, you know, how your car is feeling with heavy fuel, how your car is handling the bumps and the curves. And actually the default for once, for once, doesn't feel too bad in terms of um, you know, how the car is hitting the curves and stuff like that. It feels okay. Normally though, I would um go up one on the front right height just just in case just in case okay um so obviously if you've gone up on the front right height i would probably go up one more on the rear and that's going to give you a little bit more ground clearance and again especially if it starts raining during the race or anything like that you've at least made sure your car is not pinned to the ground which of course once changeable conditions come especially in the car at like the lambo it is trouble but, um I would probably go 55, 58 for me personally. Um, we're not going to change any of this, any of this. All this stuff, we're just going to leave standard. Just so you can see that the few changes that we've made, we, which has made us go from a 37.7 down to now a 36.1, which is 1.4 seconds. So we're already making progress on, on the setup. I think our PSIs are not too bad. We may have to go up maybe one or two clicks but nothing major and again i wanted to slightly try a lower rear toe which again is going to help with a little bit more rotation but um that remains to be seen whether that will be successful or not i think the brake bias was okay um once the brakes actually warmed up the brake bias was was pretty decent and yeah, the other thing I was going to try is a slightly higher um, wheel rate on the rear. But we're going to see how the car handles like this first. Not going to make too many changes at once. We're going to see how the car handles after the changes we just made and see if we manage to gain some more time. So let's go. So here we go, starting a lap. on the first lap and the car don't feel too bad at all. quicker after the first lap
So much quicker. Oh, there you go, again. Another half a second, or just over half a second. So, wow, we can already see, man, the car is definitely responding in the right way. Down to a 35.4. And, um, you know, on the damper side of things, what I would say, especially if you, you're not too sure what you're doing, um, and obviously you don't have the telemetry to, to see, um, if you don't openly have any problems with, with driving a car, which you're not actually going to know until you, you know, do sort of 10 laps. Now, I understand some people, they don't want to do 10, 15, 20 laps all in a row to find out um, how your tyres are going to respond, how the car responds when the tyres have lost a little bit of its shine. So what I would tell you guys is to just go over to the uh, fuel and tyre management and put on a set of tyres that you've already used, okay? So if you've done... On your tire set one, if you know you've done sort of four or five laps, keep using them tires. Count how many laps you're doing at a time and keep going back to those tires until you feel like, you know, you're really struggling to, to get the car around. The car doesn't feel comfortable. And then at least you'll know, or at least even if you have to get a pen and a paper, write down how many laps you're doing at a time and calculate how, how many laps you've done in total so you can see um, what the tires are doing when it gets to a certain age instead of having to actually drive the car um, for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes, just to test how the car feels. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I would do. Um, just keep going back to the tyres I've already used. You can see with these first set of tyres, this would have been mine. We were sliding around all the time and getting the car sideways. You can see that the light graining was already there within sort of four laps. So you can see... Um, as we've improved the setup going along, you see there's no more light graining. Again, on the third set of tires, you can still see a little bit of light graining on the front right. And I think the, we're on we we're on tire set six now, I believe. Um, we didn't use four, we used five. Again, on tire set five, which is the one, which was the last one that we used, you can see there's no tire graining whatsoever. So you can see the setup is starting to come together. You can see how by making your car more comfortable to drive, more balanced, how you don't use up as much tires. Now, the only thing that you can't really do um, is you cannot, don't know if your aero balance is perfect or not. And you're not going to know that because you don't have the telemetry to look at. And having a perfect aero balance is more than just, you know, your car feeling stable. A perfect aero balance actually affects your straight line speed and stuff like that so um again is some of the small things that are a little bit unfortunate where it does leave people without the telemetry apps at a small disadvantage but um as i said you know you gain speed through being able to drive the car confidently and comfortably and as i said this is the best way i would say to create your own base setup and to get comfortable driving the car and this you know again it's going to be different for the cars who which have a front engine. Maybe I'll do a front engine setup um, off scratch, just setting up a car with a front engine because the, the rake and stuff works a little bit different. But for the cars like the Ferrari, um, the Audi, the Lambo, again, you're going to want to, you know, first of all, just level out that ride height to start off with and work from there, see what works for you. Again, I could probably go higher than the ride height um, and test what that's like. But I feel like the car feels pretty nice how it is at the moment. So if you you do laps with this setup, save it. And then after you've saved it, which is what I'll do here, because I actually have a ton of setups for this track. I don't know why. Probably 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 had an AOR, AOR race to do around here or maybe a ACR race around here. But um, yeah, so I will just save it. I'll save it for this as a test. And then... If I wanted to make any changes, maybe if I wanted to go up on the ride height or up on the wing, then I can just save it as maybe test two. And that way you don't lose any of your setups. Or if you want to name it like ride height. Like ride height 60. So you know what changes you've made and the difference between the two setups, then name it something like that. And that way you can sort of, um, you know, work out which which setup works for you most without losing the progress you've already made. But yeah, it's Cryptic TNG. I hope you guys 
a little bit of insight on how to create your own setups from base without having to use any telemetry and see the things that I sort of look out for. Um, I do actually want to get on my PS4 pretty soon and I want to sort of have a little fiddle around with the force feedback because for me, the force feedback, last time I checked it on the PS4 was a little bit weird, I would say. It, like, that's why I just haven't been back on it. It's so strange to me how the, the wheel feels, you know? But um, I do want to get back on my PS4. I might do it tomorrow, get back on the PS4. Maybe I'll stream it um, and just just see what I could do with a force feedback just to make it feel more closer to PC, I guess. But anyway, guys, it's Cryptic TMG. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah.